Buy your sled 66111 Skills for the rest of your life Bootstraps and probability It's the bread and butter, baby, what's your jam? Greetings, Biosets 6611. In this lecture, we're going to finish talking about bootstrap sampling in the case of a two-sample example as our motivating context. We will also wrap up this lecture set with some final notes on the bootstrap and implementation. So without further ado, let's get started with the two-sample bootstrap. The first thing that's extremely important to note is that bootstrap sampling will mimic how the data were originally obtained. For an experiment designed to compare two populations, for example, we will randomly take a sample from each of our respective populations. Hence, the bootstrap sample will mimic this process. For example, if we're given independent samples of size m and n from two populations, we're first going to draw a resample of size m with replacement from just that first sample. And similarly, we will draw a separate resample of size n with replacement from the second sample. So again, we're not mixing the two samples together, we're resampling within each sample specifically. We will then compute a statistic that compares the two groups, for example, maybe the difference between two sample means. Like before, we will repeat this process of resampling many, many times, such as 10,000, and we'll then construct the bootstrap distribution of our statistic of interest and inspect things like its spread, bias, and shape, or potentially calculating confidence intervals. As an example, we're going to take uh, example 4.4 from our Chahara and Hesterberg textbook which is a comparison of commercial length between basic and extended cable during random half hour periods from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. And so what we see here is that we have 10 different samples for basic and extended cable. We will compare then the difference in means between these two cable types and calculate the corresponding bootstrap. So in this case, because we just have two small vectors of data, we'll just manually enter our data as times.basic and times.ext. Then we can calculate the mean and the standard deviation for each group, noting that on average basic cable during our sampling period had 9.21 minutes of commercials compared to 6.87 for the extended. Likewise, uh, there's smaller variability for basic and longer for the standard deviation estimated for the extended cable. We can also visually look at this with either histograms or potentially box plots in this case. And what we can see is that our basic cable has a tighter range of minutes relative to the extended cable varying between 7 to 11 versus 3 to 10. We also then just see a greater distribution then of those times concentrated in different locations with more 10 to 11 in basic cable but more 7 to 8 or the mode being 7 to 8 minutes in extended cable. Looking at our box plot on the bottom left, we actually can see that the basic cable group appears to be somewhat symmetric um, based on this representation of the median and the second, the 25th and the 75th uh, quartiles. Whereas the extended cable seems to have its median value being a bit higher, but again, as we saw with the histogram, a lot of spread towards lower potential times for duration of commercials. So let's implement the bootstrap sample of the mean and calculate then the difference of these means across 10,000 resamples. Again, as always, we start by setting our seed for reproducibility so we can recreate our bootstrap sample in the future and not get subtly different estimates each time we run our code. We'll then calculate some of these um, values that we need for the resampling, such as the number of observations for both basic and extended cable, the number of desired bootstraps B, as well as initializing times.diff.mean as an object to store our results in. What we see below then is that same simple looking for loop, but with just a little tweak now to introduce the fact that we have two samples to resample from. We see here we will first resample from the basic group and store the results in basic.boot before resampling from the extended cable times below. Again, note here, we are resampling within basic only from the times measured in the basic group 10 times with replacement. 
And likewise, with extended cable, we only resample within the extended cable um, duration for 10 times with replacement. Our last step then looks very similar to what we've seen previously, and then we'll calculate a statistic summarizing our distribution, in this case, the difference of means, and we'll store that in each one of our for each one of our 10,000 bootstrap resamples before summarizing some of the characteristics. So here we can look at some plots of our bootstrap distribution, and we can make some connections to some of the things we do know are true based on some of the theory underlying um, our estimates. For example, we know the sample means approximately normally distributed, even if the underlying distribution is not, by the central limit theorem. Although we may be concerned about estimating the confidence interval, depending on how normal we feel it is and how what the sample size is. Here we see that our distribution of the sample means, the difference of them, is also approximately normally distributed. We then also see at the right the QQ plot generally um, is pretty close to the diagonal line and even in the tails it's following pretty closely. So we may be fairly co comfortable using normal approximations in this case. Or we could just use bootstrap approximations or the bootstrap percentiles to estimate maybe confidence intervals to describe the variability. From our bootstrap distribution, we can also calculate the mean, the bias, and the standard error. Um, for example, we do see that on average there are longer durations for commercials in basic versus extended cable. We can compare this then to the actual observed difference in means, which is pretty close, resulting in, again, minimal bias. And we have our estimated standard error from the difference in means from our bootstrap distribution of 0.756 which we can then use to estimate the potential accuracy of things like our bootstrap percentile confidence interval. And so in this case, let's just focus on calculating the bootstrap percentile confidence interval and summarizing its conclusions as well as some other things we can draw from it. So again, in this case, it's pretty easy to calculate. We just use the quantile function in R telling it to look at whatever our bootstrap distribution of 10,000 values are and pull out what the um, 2.5th and 97.5th percentiles are. We see here that we now have a 95% bootstrap percentile interval that is 0 0.89 to 3.84 minutes. So we are 95% confident that the true mean difference lies within this interval. We can also note that the ratio of our bias divided by our standard error of our bootstrap distribution is pretty small at negative 0.008, which does not exceed plus or minus 0.1, so we should have good accuracy for this bootstrap percentile confidence interval. Another thing we can note is that, strictly speaking, what we've talked about so far, we haven't drawn any conclusion about statistical significance. That's because here we have no p-values that we're calculating. Because remember, the p-value comes from assuming some distributional assumption that we then use to compare to to calculate how much our statistic deviates from what we would expect to see. However, we do note there is that connection between confidence intervals and statistical significance that we can take advantage of. So here, in our example, since the 95% confidence interval excludes zero, we can conclude it is unlikely that the duration of commercials between basic and extended cable are equal, and that basic cable likely has more commercials. Again, this isn't a p-value that we're interpreting as a single summary measure, but we can leverage the confidence interval to draw some conclusions. So let's shift gears slightly to consider the case of matched data. In the case where we have matched pairs for our cable data, for example, we could simply conduct a one sample bootstrap on the distribution of those matched differences. So here we see our code example implementing that bootstrap we saw in the previous lecture, where now we just calculate a new vector of length 10, just taking the times for basic and extended cable, assuming they're matched between each other. We will then implement our bootstrap of 10,000, and calculate our 95% bootstrap percentile interval. In this case, since the data is matched, we have a tighter confidence interval than our unmatched example. So note that it's 1.18 to 3.40, which is a little tighter than we saw in the previous slide. 
And in this case, we would conclude very similarly that we are 95% confident that the true mean difference is between 1.18 to 3.40 minutes for basic and extended cable at the same time of day. So here we're explicitly noting the matching that we did, which then informed whether we did a one or two sample bootstrap. So with that, let's close with a few final notes to keep in mind. What are some of the advantages we could use for bootstrap sampling? First, it's ideal for understanding the sampling distribution of a sample or multiple samples and or statistics from a sample or multiple samples without assuming anything about the true underlying distribution, or it might be a case where it doesn't fit nicely into one of the known distributions we have. We can also result in better confidence intervals than we would achieve with parametric methods. So for example, the normal approximation or the normal percentile confidence interval, or using a t-distribution based interval to add uncertainty in our um, asymptotic case. And this is especially true if the population, population has moderate or greater skewness to it, or if we have small sample sizes. One thing though is that bootstrap to keep in mind as well is that bootstrap diagnostics are easy to apply um, to help determine the amount of skewness in the underlying population and the potential impact on coverage of the asymptotic confidence intervals and if we should maybe use bootstrap percentile intervals instead. Another consideration is that we discussed one sort of setup for bootstrapping but many different schemes exist. What we did was known as case resampling but there's also variations known as smooth, Bayesian, wild, parametric, block, and others. So as you may want to learn more about bootstrapping, there's a wide world to explore. And just a final reminder, the bootstrap will not improve our estimators. We ultimately can't do any better than the sample we have. However, we can use a bootstrap to help estimate the variability of our estimators that we do observe for example the standard error or a confidence interval for the sampling distribution and even though we don't have a p-value to accompany this we can still compare our confidence intervals to an expected null value such as no difference or maybe an odds ratio of one to evaluate the potential significance based on the confidence interval and with that, we'll wrap up our three lectures on bootstraps before moving into a similar yet distinctly different topic of permutation testing, as well as discussing other non-parametric approaches to hypothesis testing.